Welcome to learn system view in five minutes. This is tutorial nine and in this tutorial we will look at how to perform real time tuning of various parameters in system view. Refer to the last workspace uh, we were working where we implemented our QPSK modulator and here I have disabled both the real time sinks and we are just using a regular graph to plot our modulation spectrum. Now, assuming there is a condition where I need to change different parameters of some of these blocks, uh, such as, let's say, the carrier frequency of this block. Now, in a normal situation, I would need to double click on this block. I need to change the, the carrier frequency, click OK, we rerun the simulation to see the equivalent impact here on the graph. Now, the other way to do that in system view is called real-time tuning. Notice that um, against all the parameters which we have in the component, you see this option called tune. Now, if we enable any parameter to be tunable, we could change it during the runtime and uh, from a normal common window, and we don't need to go to each block to change its parameter. Now, once we make a component value as tunable, we can go to view menu and switch on the tune window. Now, all the different windows of system view, you can switch on and switch off using this view window in order to maximize or manage your work area here. So we'll go ahead and switch on tune. Now, in this tune window, notice because I have already activated a variable or a component parameter to be tunable, it appears here. Now, in order to change or sweep through various values of this component, we can either use a step size method and declare in what steps I would like to change the value, or, or we can use percentage, uh, you know, assign a 5% variation from one um, step to another step and so on. For this demo, I will just simply use a step size and I will keep this step size as two. Now, one thing uh, additionally you need to select when we have to change this value, one of the simulator here has to run so that we can see the impact of the variation of the component parameter. So in this case, right now, I only have one simulator, which is this QPSK mod, and that is appearing at the bottom here. And you can notice analysis to run auto recalculate a window is here. If you have multiple simulators, you will see a list here, and we can just go ahead and select the right simulator, uh, which will make the difference when we run the simulation. Now I will go ahead and run an initial simulation in this setting make sure everything is okay. Now, when I click on this parameter value and you can see there's up and down arrow, which I can move in order to change the value in this step, or I can manually type whatever value I'm looking at. So let's go ahead and switch, you know, click on this up arrow. And now notice it becomes 72 and the spectrum shifted. Now let me click again. So what's happening behind the scene? The value is getting changed here. It is getting passed into this modulator. And because this auto recalculate is on, system view is automatically performing this simulation for you. Now this way you can go ahead and change, um, you know, whatever parameter you want. And you can have as many parameters here and you can do real time tuning. Now, in some cases as a default uh, nature of system view, you will have this checkpoint uh, switched on to graph. That means it will always retain the original value or the start value from you started with. Now notice what happens here. If I switch on the checkpoint and if I change the value, the original graph is always imprinted, original trace is always imprinted on the graph, um, indicating how far have we come from the original state. If you need to clear this checkpoint, just go ahead and click on this icon or press C, which is the shortcut key. So once we click on that, it removes the original state and it only retains the current state of our results. So this way you could change the, the parameter, do real time tuning. Now let's talk about um, you know, how to tune a variable which is not declared directly in the block. Because in system view, I can have a condition where instead of hard coding a value here, I might use some variable name, let's say my FC. Now, when I declare a variable which is not defined, see so system view immediately detects that. And if we go and look inside this block, it, you, it is reading, trying to read the value of this variable, but it's not declared anywhere. And that's why you see a blank um, you know, a number here. And also system view throws out an error here, indicating there is an error 
in our design setup. So to declare this variable, there are multiple ways we could do. If we want this variable value to be local to this schematic, I could simply right click here and add an equation page and here I can declare that value. The other way is to declare the same uh, variable under workspace tree. So the difference between these two is anything we declare here will be local to this schematic. Anything which we declared here would be accessible to all the designs in your tree. So let's go ahead and declare a value here. So system view is case sensitive, so we will use the same syntax. And to make value tunable, I can go ahead and add tune and enter the number which we are looking at. Now, in order to run this equation so that my EFC is calculated, we can just simply press Control G. And now you can notice design one dot my EFC parameter is available for tuning. If you forget about Control G, just remember to right click. And now you have an option here called run equations. So it will compute the equation. Now, by changing this value here, my EFC, uh, we will end up having the same behavior as we saw earlier. So if you go ahead and click on 72, notice the graph is again changing because now by changing this variable, we are changing the value here. You can see right now it's 76, which is our current setting. And this variable gets passed in this block and everything is synchronized properly. So that's your five minutes. Hope you liked watching this video and this will be useful for your system design work. Thanks for watching and best of luck designing your systems.